otherwise I'd never get a chance. There's only 10 minutes. <laughs> uh, kia ora, my name's Tracy Martin um, and I'm from New Zealand First. So um, just to launch straight into it really, New Zealand First um, believes in the same as what Grant said and the same as what um, every politician will tell you. We believe that the investment in education is an investment in your people for your country's future. Um, we still have in our manifesto the fact that we want to come back to a zero fees model. So we have got the dollar for dollar repayment scheme which is a step towards that model. So those, um, those students that finish their um, degrees or finish their training and they have a student debt but they remain in New Zealand and they work for their country and that means working privately but you're in that country using your skills for the people who actually assisted you through your training. For every dollar paid on their student loan, um, the government would deduct a dollar. So that's an interim step towards the zero fees model that we want to get to. Um, and I want to be really clear though, New Zealand First still believes that you have a debt to your country. So while it would be a recognition, what we're talking about is a recognition that your country has invested in you. I was up at Auckland University for a backbenchers, I think it was last year, and a young student came forward and said, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this, and I'm going to go, what are you going to do to keep me here? And actually nothing, because the country is actually already subsidising um, student fees. However, New Zealand First thinks they should be 100% free, but the student needs to recognise that then there is a civil burden. You have to pay it back. Nothing is for free in life. There has to be an understanding between um, the student and the government that we're in this together for the betterment of our country. So New Zealand First is working on around policies about once we get to that zero fees, how do we actually truly get that understanding of a relationship? That we don't hold our citizens here so that they can't leave anywhere, because we want them to go overseas, we want them to see other nations, we want them to appreciate how good it is here, and also bring back the sciences and the experiences and the teaching that they have over there to improve New Zealand but we must have that understanding that this is actually um, an equal relationship between the government and the student, and the government and the citizen. So it's a two-sided relationship. So that's the first thing. Um, where this is, there is no doubt about it, this is a privatisation of the education system. And I was just talking to Rory, um, the fact that I spoke with Leslie and asked Leslie, I haven't seen the TEC in my office for two years. And I know I'm New Zealand first, and I know that everybody thinks that Winston Peters is the only guy to speak to. It's untrue, unfortunately. So it's, it's a shame that the TEU sorry, hasn't been to see me, because we agree. And I speak with the NZDI and the PPTA and the Early Childhood Education Providers, and I speak with the New Zealand Principals Federation. This is so bad what is coming if there is a third term of this type of um, <coughs> philosophy, that if all areas of education don't hold hands together, it is likely that they will succeed. And again, as I was just saying to Rory, where is the tipping point? Where is the point where it gets tipped so far that we can't bring it back? And nobody in education is happy. The PEBs aren't happy, the ITOs aren't happy, the universities aren't happy, the schools aren't happy, nobody's happy except the government. So we need to make sure, and whoever your new president is, needs to start joining those links with those other unions. This has got to be across the country. And like I'm saying to NZDI and PPTA, get ready to go out. Get ready to actually hit the street next year in an election year. Because they will fragment as they've done before. And my concern is that Peter Hughes at the moment has been, is talking the talk and there's not enough time to see whether he'll walk the walk and I'm concerned that teachers who are um, reasonable, responsible people who care for their students and who hate to go out on strike will actually take that small glimmer of hope and stop the process. So I guess I'm actually, I've gone off the track because I'm first, but I'm putting in a plug for your union to join hands with the other unions to try and stop this rot, because that's what it is. Um, I just came back from Myanmar recently, and you can see what happens to universities where um, 
the state doesn't believe, either doesn't believe in education or believes it's dangerous. And education is dangerous because people think. So um, we don't want to end up looking like those. I've been working with Alistair a lot also. New Zealand First has an eight-point plan for tertiary education. It's inside our 2011 manifesto. It needs some updating. Um, Alistair has been a great resource to me and Pete as well. And there's, so there's work being done to update that. It's around the student allowance, uh, sorry, the, the living allowance. New Zealand First believes that every student should have a living allowance. And I actually probably, I disagree with Grant in one little thing. I believe that if you say that if a person is studying for the benefit of their country, I don't care what their parents earn. If it's a right, it's a right. I don't care what their parents earn. If you are 25, it shouldn't matter what your parents earn. If you are 20 and you are studying, it shouldn't matter what your parents earn. It confuses things when we start to asset test these, um, what we believe is a right. And I believe that if you are studying, you have the right to access an income so you can eat. And so you can pay your rent. So New Zealand First um, has a policy of a universal student allowance. The, probably before, I'm going to sit down because I hate to take up too much people's time, but the, the last thing is around actually the student voice. And I did read the press release that came out yesterday um, from here with regard to Stephen Joyce's talk. Um, I, I think he said everything that you wanted him to say, sort of thing, except didn't make any commitments to anything, that's pretty much it. So he identified, yes, he's disappointed, that's sad, how unfortunate, but nothing will happen. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> so um, Alistair has actually put forward a proposal to New Zealand First around the um, being able to leverage with the SAC funding and the CSSF, oh, well there's so many of these letter things really. Um, about creating a body that monitors the student voice, that best practice is actually used inside the universities and being able to use that funding to leverage. And the price tag we've got on it that, that Al's done the work for us on is around about $2 million a year, I think, to manage. No, it's not over a year, is it? Whatever it is, $2 million is not a lot when you compare it to $2.3 billion spent on students, on student loans. So um, that's work that we're doing. That's a commitment we're making. There's a long way to the election, but um, I just wanted you to know that New Zealand First is very aware of the, situ of the circumstances that students are in, and certainly we back the public education system. Kia ora.